Uh, hi, uh, so this is the last uh, topic of module two, PRF and range ambiguities. The last video for module two, okay? So uh, this is the topic following transmitter power <coughs> and the integration of radar pulses. Now, so PRF, uh, the term PRF is uh, uh, already known to you, pulse repetition frequency. This pulse repetition frequency is often determined by the maximum and ambiguous range, that is RUN beyond which the targets are not expected, <coughs> okay. right, sorry. <coughs> um, so I'll just quickly take one, one second. So PRF is determined primarily by the maximum range at which, at which the targets are expected. <coughs> so PRF, that is FP, is inversely proportional to, uh, sorry, is, is, is equal to 1 by dp, right? So what is 1 by dp? <clears throat> Let us quickly revise what is dp and fp. <clears throat> yeah. So this was the figure. One second. <coughs> this was the figure which we have seen in module 1. Okay, this is figure 1.3 in chapter 1. So this much, so from the start of the first pulse till the start of the second pulse, this much is one dp, right? So PRI is this much, and one by PRI, which is one by dp is one uh, FP. And this is the pulse width, that is two, which we're talking about in transmitter power, okay? And the power which is visible here is the peak power. Power throughout this dp is the average power. So P average is obtained by peak power into the duty cycle. Duty cycle is nothing but tau, that is this, divided by dp, that is this complete cycle, right? And 1 by dp is nothing but R FP, that is PRF, okay? So this PRF, so usually uh, when the pulse is sent, so this is the transmitting pulse, so when the pulse is sent at this point, a received echo pulse should be within this dp right so this uh, usually echo pulse will have a lesser power so that is the minimum detectable signal p 10 to the power minus 12 watt so here <coughs> peak power is one megawatt okay so usually because it is hitting the target and coming back the echo power will be very less okay so usually uh, if uh, the multiple time around echoes shouldn't be there right so this echo should be within this one TP. So if this is coming after this, then we have uh, ambiguity, correct? Range ambiguities. So this topic is about range ambiguities. So if this PRF is made too high, so what is meant by high PRF? That means TP is less. High PRF means TP is less. That means the second pulse is going to be very uh, closer by. So if this pulse, second pulse is coming very close to the first pulse, the time the duration uh, within which the echo pulse should be received is going to be very less, and hence the ambiguity is going to be very high, correct? So if this PRF is made too high, the likelihood of obtaining the target echoes from the wrong pulse transmission is increased. That means the ambiguity is going to be increased. That is range ambiguities are going to be high. So, uh, and we all know what is multiple time around echoes okay so echo signals received after so there's a mistake here spelling mistake echo signals received after the interval exceeding the pulse repetition period that is tp so when the uh, echo signals are received after tp so if it is here if the echo signal is received after first second tp it is called as second time around echoes after that if it is received after third or fourth or fifth TP, it is called as multiple time around echoes, which is ideally uh, bad, correct? So it shouldn't be there. So this multiple time around echoes give rise to range ambiguities, which we have to reduce. Now this figure is uh, something which we can see in the textbook. So the, if this problem is, if this question is asked, you have to draw this, okay? Now, <clears throat> so, uh, this, one second. Uh, this, now, 
this is the figure which shows multiple timer on echoes which give rise to range ambiguities. So this is figure A. So you can see three things. One is A, B and C. So A, B, C are nothing but three targets. Okay. This uh, ambiguities, the, you can see there's a lot of confusion here. There is there, uh, this sort of uh, outputs result in error as well as confusion. Okay, so uh, what we have to see is, so this is the first TP and A is the target echo signal which is obtained. So R and ambiguous is this range. So any echo signal, if it is coming within this range, within this TP, then it is an ambiguous range. If it is coming after this, it is called as ambiguous range, right? So you can see there are three TPs here. So this is one TP, that is one by FP. This is second TP, two TP or two by FP. This is three TP or three by FP, okay? So in first TP, you have received an echo signal, which is A. Okay, so this is fine. So this is uh, within the TP and you can easily predict it, uh, easily detect it, okay? Now, this is second TP. So in that also, A is coming in the same uh, position, but then you can also see B. So this B was not there in the first TP, which means B is second time around echo, right? So this B, since it is not there in first TP, if it was actual echo signal, it should have been here also, right? But it is not here. It is only present in the uh, second TP. So which means this is second time around echo. It should have been somewhere here, but it has come after the second one. So it is second time around echo. Okay, but A is properly. So usually we will not conclude our results using one TP, correct? So we will take second sweep, third sweep, and many pulses could be integrated. That's what we saw in the previous session in integration of radar pulses. So like this, many uh, samples would be taken, many sweeps would be taken, and then integration would be done, okay? So in the second pulse, we can see there is some second time around echo. Now in the third pulse, you can see a new thing, which is C, right? New echo signal. So this C is not available in the first TP. It is not available in the second TP. But then suddenly it has appeared in the third TP. So this is multiple time around echo, right? So now when you integrate all these sweeps. So what do we do? We integrate every sweep. So one, two, three, like that. All the samples are integrated. And then the result what we <coughs> obtain is shown in B, this figure B. So you can see here. So what is A, figure A? Three targets, A, A B, and C, where A is within R, R and ambiguous, R, U, N. B and C are multiple time round echoes, that is targets, right? Now B is, what is figure B? It is appearance of the three targets on A scope. So A scope, I have told this term already. So this A scope is the display, the device where you get the display of these echo signals. So this A scope will look like this. Okay? I will also show you another view of A scope, actual view. Now this, when you integrate all these, what do you see? What do you observe? So you see, you find B first, then C, then A. Actual target was A, correct? Actual unambiguous star echo signal is A, but then B, since B has been uh, detected prior to A in second TP, it is coming first, and then C is coming, correct? So this is the problem of integration. When you are using single PRF, okay? So you are using single PRF all the time. So TP here, TP second, TP third, everything is same, correct? And then when you are integrating, you are getting this result, which is actually wrong, correct? Right, so uh, your actual target is A. So existence of multiple time around echoes uh, cannot be readily recognized with a constant PRF waveform, okay? So when these three uh, PR, PRIs, that is TPs or sweeps are superimposed on the radar display, uh, that is A scope, which we're talking about here, right? Then the ambiguous echoes, which are the ambiguous echoes A, B, and C, they look same as the unambiguous range echo of A, right? Only the range of A is correct, but it cannot be determined from this display. Okay, so uh, ambiguous range echoes can, can be recognized by changing the PRF of the radar. 
So that is what uh, we have discussed right earlier. Changing PRF is one option to reduce blind speed. Now, changing PRF is also one uh, way to reduce the multiple to to avoid the appearance of multiple time around echoes on the A score. Okay. So this ambiguous range echoes that is PNC can be recognized by changing the PRF. So how how is that happening? Suppose now uh, we are using TP, this TP. In the second time, we are using a TP which is uh, which is uh, bigger than this. Okay, so here somewhere, and the third pulse is sent lesser than the first TP, like that. So every time the TP changes. If that is the scenario, then this B and C locations will change. Correct. So B. So then when you integrate all the sweeps. You will find that this you will find B and C in this manner. So when PRF is changed, the ambiguous echo that is A that will remain at its true range, correct? But the ambiguous echoes that is B and C uh, appear at different apparent range for each PRF. Okay, so this is how it will appear. Okay, so you can see a spread. Okay, fine. So the ambiguous target ranges can be hence readily observed or identified. Okay. So by using, by employing changing PRFs, so you can see this appearance of three targets on A-scope with changing PRF. So you can see B and C have a spread, whereas A, which is the true target, doesn't have any spread. It is the same as this. Okay. So this is how by using uh, changing, okay, changing PRFs, multiple time around echoes can be easily readily identified okay so this is uh, the same things which i have said so ambiguous range echoes can be recognized by changing the prf of the red arc so in such a case an ambiguous echo that is a remains at its true range which we saw here right this a doesn't have any change but echoes from multiple time tar around targets that is uh, b and c will have a spread over a finite range you can see the spread here right so PRF may be changed continuously within the prescribed limits or <clears throat> may be changed discreetly among several predetermined values. So this changing PRF will, uh, will let us know which all are the multiple time around echoes. Okay, fine. So that's how we reduce the range ambiguities. So other than <clears throat> uh, changing the PRF, there are other schemes which can be used in order to identify the multiple time around echoes. They are by changing the pulse width also, pulse amplitude, by changing pulse width that is 2, by changing the frequency that is indirectly lambda, which we have already discussed, and hence the phase also. And then also changing the polarization of transmission. Uh, so these are different other ways using which you can identify multiple time around echoes apart from changing PRF. Okay? Yeah. Now, this is how, this is one GIF which shows uh, A score, okay, so you can see so the, a point signal is sent and then signal is received back, okay, see, so you can closely observe this, <coughs> so this is one TP, so signal is sent, hitting the target and then received back, so when it is reached, it reaches this point, so that's one hit, that is one sweep. Right, one sweep is sending the signal to target and then receiving it back to the red arc. Right, so that is one TP. <clears throat> so within this one TP, you should receive the echo signal. So this is the hit. Right, so you can see this yellow point hitting. Right? So this is where it is hit, hitting back the red arc. Okay, so this is how an A scope will look like. Right, so that is one side. So this is uh, one practical <clears throat> version of A scope. This is how A scopes. Usually in radar receivers will look like the display. Okay. Yeah. Now, so uh, so this is uh, how we predict which is the correct range. Okay. So imagine, imagine you have two PRFs. So first PRF is F1 and the second PRF is F2. Okay. Fine. So imagine <clears throat> the same figure where this first PRF is F1 and the second PRF is not the same. It is something different. Maybe this pulse is coming after this point. Okay. So imagine we have two different PRFs sent simultaneously. That is F1 and F2. Okay. Now <clears throat> consider F1 has RUN1 
and F2 has RUN2. Okay. That means within that F1, you should get the echo signal. When you get the echo signal, that is RUN1. And within the F2, when you get the echo signal, that is RUN2. Now, <clears throat> and suppose R1 <clears throat> is the uh, range which is obtained. So this R1 can be within RUN also. Uh, then it is called as unambiguous range. This R1 can come beyond F1 also, right? Sorry. R1 can come beyond F2 also, right? F1 also. So either this is RUN1. So R1 can come here. R1 can come here. Right? It can be a second time around. Okay? It can come here also. It can come here also. Right? So, what? how do we predict R1? So, either the true range is R1, which is if it is inside uh, F, F1, or it is if R1 is coming here, it is RUN1 plus R1. If R1 is coming here, it is RUN2 RUN plus R1. So, if R1 is coming here, it is 3 RUN 1 plus R, right? So like that. So these are the predictions. So the true range would be either R1 if it is within RUN. So if it is beyond RUN 1, it is R1 plus RUN. If it is beyond two pulses, it is 2 RUN 1 plus R1 and so on. So any of these, this or this or this could be correct. Now to find which is correct, <coughs> we are going to check the same thing for the next PRM. So with second PRF, which is different from F1, you have RUN2 as the uh, unambiguous range. So the other probabilities would be either the true range would be either R2 if it is within RUN2, or it is R2 plus RUN2 if it is after RUN2. If it is R2, uh, it, it can be R2 plus 2 RUN2 if it is after two pulses, right? Or like that. Now, when you compare these two PRFs, whichever is the same. So if this is same, then this is the true range. If these two are same, then that is considered as the correct range. If these two are same, that is considered as the correct range. The correct range is that value which is the same with two PRFs. Understood? So that is how we can we <coughs> predict the range ambiguity with different PRFs. So that's how using different PRFs, the range ambiguities can be avoided. Clear? That's it, uh, this topic. Okay. Now I will just show the question paper. <coughs> okay, so this is <coughs> uh, the same uh, last year's question paper with your code 15 ec 833 So I had shown this. Uh, from this module, you have modified radar range equation in terms of SNR and then the types of losses and then the envelope detector uh, with the expressions of probability of false alarm and probability of detection. And then see the last question. Illustrate the concepts of pulse repetition frequency, PRF, and range ambiguities in case of radar. Okay, so this question is asked for eight points. Fine. So this is important. So whatever I told and I've discussed in this video, you have to write for this quest. Clear? Okay. So that's it. Um, that is the end of this topic, PRF and range activities. And hence we have completed module two. So next video will be on module four, tracking radar. Okay. Thank you.